Hello there, David here from Another Eden Adventures. Today we're going to discuss a very special Another Eden character to me. She dresses like a gothic Lolita, she brandishes a massive spear, her badass alter version is coming out soon on Global, and she keeps saying she is the reincarnation of a spirit demon realm. She's my favourite character in all of Another Eden, sorry Moki, and you guessed it, her name is Suzette. First released in 2019, Suzette is a fairly old character and the latest Mythos update so far portrays her as a bit of a doofus and a comic relief for serious moments. You know, she kind of acts like Thilly Lily in the previous Mythos episodes. But believe it or not, Suzette's origin story is pretty intense and bloody and with a true manifest weapon, she is one of the most powerful units in my roster personally. But there's much more you absolutely need to know before the release of her altered version. For example, is she really the princess of the underworld that she says she is? Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe. These videos take a long time to make, so a few quick clicks can make a huge difference. Thanks so much for your support everyone. And of course, spoilers ahead. Suzette first appeared in the future Miglena city of El Zion, just like Dewey and Mighty, who I've also done guides for and have linked below. Suzette's Japanese voice actress is played by Sumire Uwasaka, who's done a ton of work on anime and games. In some recent games, she plays Kanon Tachibana in The World Ends With You and Kirie Kanan from the Final Fantasy VII Remake, which I'm playing by the way, and if you want to join me, I have a link to my playthrough videos below. Suzette's English voice actress was played by Sky Bennett, who also has a few video games under her belt such as Horizon Forbidden West and Xenoblade Chronicles 2, where she plays Pyra and Mithra. So what's Suzette's story actually like? She actually reminds me a lot of Thilalile. Suzette sounds so confident in being someone that others believe she's not. Whereas Thilalile keeps saying she's a sword wielding saviour. Who is Thilalile? She's the reincarnation of the sword wielding saviour. A good if you don't know. I can see it on your face. You don't believe a word of this. Suzette keeps saying she's a dark princess of the underworld. And even when she meets Aldo, Aldo immediately calls her BS and literally walks out on her. Suzette, dark princess of the netherworld. The myriad of lost souls within me will keep you safe, even unto... Hey, where are you going? Wait, I haven't finished my spiel. One thing you realize about Suzette from the get-go is her love of sweets. Not only does her character keep bringing it up, but you actually see sweets rain down as part of her another force attack and Sweet Tooth is literally written into her personality. As I hinted earlier, in terms of design, Suzette has a gothic Lolita getup while brandishing a giant demon looking spear. The spear literally has an eye and actual teeth that no one seems to notice or comment on. She also mentions her cursed left eye. More on that later, but in terms of Suzette's artwork, this cursed left eye is noticeable if you really squint and put your face up to her OG and alter design. Suzette's true story doesn't really start until chapter 2, but one thing to note about chapter 1 is Suzette's mention of La Vie en Rose, pardon my broken pronunciation here, which is coincidentally the title of a super popular song by Edith Piaf, which I'm sure you'd have heard at some point. Le Vion Rose can mean something like seeing life through rose-colored glasses or seeing the world more optimistically. I'm not sure if we're meant to look into this more deeply, but Suzette has two roses on her top hat and her cursed eye enables her to see things that others cannot. Suzette also has a past full of suffering and darkness and if you keep watching, you'll realize it sure is screwed up but she plays the part of a naive yet optimistic princess of the dark world. Maybe in a way she is also living a life where she chooses to see roses and beauty where others who have suffered as much as she has may not. She loves sweets because she still believes life is sweet despite the horrors of reality. Speaking of sweets, La Vie en Rose is also the name of Suzette's favorite sweet shop. You never get to see the actual shop in her original quests, but they do have an entire scene about it and Suzette even gets to be a waitress on the latest Mythos update. In chapter 2 of Suzette's original quests, 
titled If You Stare Into The Abyss, an archaeology buff tells Suzette and Aldo about an ancient spell book. This book speaks of a prophecy of a beast that's going to lay waste to the world and how the only person that can seal it away is the princess of darkness wielding the power of the spirits. Sound familiar? Aldo and Suzette find the book and Suzette tells Aldo that they need to release the beast then seal it away for another thousand years. As usual, Aldo's like, can't argue with that, that sounds valid. All of a sudden, Suzette hears a voice. What? What is this? The voice tells them to go to industrial ruins and lo and behold, a beast does come out, much to Aldo's and even Suzette's surprise. But after they defeat the monster, Aldo explains that the monster was from his era and only appeared because of a random tear in space-time and not because Suzette summoned it. Upon returning to the archaeology buff, the archaeology buff apologizes that the spell book was fake, but Suzette refuses to believe it was fake. In chapter 3, titled The Sinful Spiral of Fate, we start with Suzette looking upon the wastelands of the future. Suzette has a dramatic moment with Aldo. She reminisces on how she left the netherworld when she was only 5 years old to be reborn into this world. She believes that the journey must have been so exhausting that she lost all memories of her past. Suzette says that the time has now come for her own seal to be broken and her true powers to awaken. The Dark Princess's Revival. So maybe the prophesied beast that the archaeology buff mentioned in the previous chapter was talking about Suzette all along. Aldo is like, what? And once again, Suzette refers to the power of a cursed left eye, which is giving her instructions. And this latest instruction is, unravel the helix curse, awaken your destiny. I have no idea why I did that voice. They meet a research staff member from KMS, that mega corporation I talked about in my guide to Dewey, who needs help finding research from a number of years ago. He talks about a facility that was destroyed under mysterious circumstances. He says, at least five of these labs went out of operation practically overnight. Hang on. Remember in Dewey's story, there were seven KMS labs and five were forced to close? Were these the same labs? I have a theory, but more on this later. The research dude then says they found some info, but for some reason, the security seals attuned into Suzette's biometric data. Suzette then blabbers something about the netherworld and the research dude is kind of confused but then he says her language sounds very familiar to something he found. He found this passage. There once existed a spirit that took the power of the blood of the gods and sought to use it as its own. After a nigh endless struggle, the spirit was cast into the shadows and sealed away along with its stolen power. It left behind a prophecy. If you desire power, unravel the secret of the helix. Ooh, spooky. The research person then says, the secret of the helix must be at the heart of what they called Project Eugenes. Suzette and Aldo look for the seal for the truth, which Suzette uses her second sight to reveal. So her cursed eye is added again as only Suzette and not Aldo sees the terminal sparkling. Something takes over Suzette and like a robot, she explains that in those labs that closed down all those years ago, the researchers sought to unravel the secret of the helix. The goal was to unlock humanity's true power and take our species evolution to the next level. And I believe this helix they're referring to is the double helix, which describes the structure of our DNA, the very thing the scientists were trying to manipulate. Suzette and Aldo proceed to the terminal core, where something activates in Suzette and she single-handedly takes down a group of robots like a complete badass. Suzette, who still seems to be controlled by something, explains to Aldo that she's a host implanted with a perfect genome with the help of what they just did, she was able to access her latent ability and Project Eugenes can be brought to completion. As a side note, Eugenes may be based on the Greek name Eugene, which in turn comes from the Greek word noble or well-born, which could explain the experiment on Suzette, as well as test subjects that can withstand testing and be born a stronger person. Also, Eugene sounds like genes, like DNA genes, get it? Anyway. Suzette confirms my theory by telling Aldo that the research they conducted all those years ago 
involved testing infants and manipulating their DNA to create possibly super soldiers. Because what else, right? Could Suzette and Dewey both have been manufactured in the same lab perhaps? Could those missing five labs have been used as a testing ground for children. Suzette's story certainly seems to hint of that. Suzette, still in her trance, explains that the Suzette we all know and love cannot control the strength of this new super Suzette. The voice explains that when Suzette was a child, she lacked the cognitive ability to control her own powers, resulting in the destruction of one of the labs. The project then had to be suspended until her brain reached a state of maturity, which is right now. So it seems that what I hinted earlier was true. The prophesized beast that will take over the world was indeed Suzette. And although a favorite hero just helped make this prophecy a reality. Thanks Aldo. So whatever's controlling Suzette now orders her to return to KMS. Aldo refuses, but she easily cuts him down. And just like Luke calling out to his father, Aldo calls out to the true Suzette and the true Suzette overpowers whatever is controlling her. The real Suzette then remembers how when she was a kid, she destroyed the whole facility that was testing her and killed everyone who was there, even the children. She would have only been like 5 years old. How crazy is that? Also, could this have been the same facility Dewey was in and he was the sole survivor? Suzette confesses she repressed those dark and bloody memories and replaced them with a fantastical story about how she came from the netherworld. And here, La Vie on Rose comes full circle. She sees roses where there was actually blood and carnage. I mean, if I was old though, I'd recommend her to go to a therapist. But hey, that's just my unprofessional opinion. Aldo clearly knows much more than I do. He can travel through time and space and he's saved the world countless times. What do I know, right? Aldo and Suzette return to the researcher and to cover up all of Suzette's heinous crimes, they claim all the data had been lost and the researcher immediately believes everything they said without checking the data for himself. In the end, Suzette tells Aldo while she was under the trance, she'd forgotten everything that just happened, even her confession of mass murder. Good old Aldo comes up with a story about a dark prince or whatever that's more in line with Suzette's false narrative about her being a princess of the netherworld. Suzette seems to agree, but in a plot twist, Suzette confesses to herself that she now remembers everything that happened. But for Aldo's sake, she will stay as the naive and quirky Suzette who's insistent that she's from the netherworld. And I think what we can conclude from this is that if you ever commit mass murder, the only friend you can trust with this information is Aldo. So there you have it. Suzette, like Dewey, was the product of a science experiment conducted by KMS gone horribly wrong. In turn, it's given her immense powers, and if you've unlocked a true manifest weapon, you'll know what I mean. Suzette is my favorite character in the game, and I'm glad she has an even bigger role to play in the latest Mythos update. So it's really fun revisiting her. Once again, Please like and subscribe. This video literally took me a few hours to complete, so your support is much appreciated. I'll also be doing more of these in the future and I don't want you to miss out. So thank you everyone. Love you. Bye.